Hey everyone, Salaam Alaikum. So we are starting off with the extension of the lecture Critical Path Analysis and in this video I am going to explain the concept of dummy activities that proves to be troublesome for a lot of students. So what is a dummy activity? A dummy activity is known to have a logical dependence like it's not an activity but it's rather represented by a path that is dotted and it shows the logical dependence of one activity over the other and these things might be clear to you in a while as soon as I take you to the example but first if you are given a question of the CPA it's very important to identify the dummy activity and how do you identify the dummy activity in order to identify the dummy activity you would have to check the column of preceding activities and when you see the column of preceding activities you'd see that there would be an activity for example there would be an activity that would be required to be completed along with another activity but then in another activity in the sequence column or in the preceding activities column it would be ending in isolation as well now you can clearly see that c here is having two separate ends it requires to be completed alongside d and it requires to be completed alone as well so this shows that you cannot follow the normal pattern for answering questions on cpa and you would have to change your approach so let's discuss an example through which our concept can be more refined. Now, if you look at this particular question, you are given five activities, A, B, C, D, and E. And there's the sequence column that I was talking about earlier, along with the duration in hours written. All right. So let's first identify the dummy activity. So A and B have no preceding activities which means that these are the starting activities because it's represented by a dash if you look at c so c requires a and b both to be completed all right but if you look at d d requires only a to be completed now this means that activity a would need to be ended together in conjunction with b and would need to be ended separately as well now, if you follow the traditional path of solving questions of CPA, you won't be able to solve this particular question because this particular question has an additional complication and that is the existence of a dummy activity right here. So without further ado, let me take you to the solution of this particular question. So we start off with the starting node that is obviously common in every question that you solve and in case you do not know how to solve a critical path analysis question you should see the video that i made in which i've explained the entire concept and the construction and the calculation of critical path along with the minimum duration in extreme detail all right so we, we start off with two activities namely activity a that has a duration of two and activity b that has a duration of one so far so good so we have drawn these two activities and now activity c requires us to complete a and b together which shows or which indicates the need for a joint node right whereas activity d requires a to be completed alone now mind you whenever you are faced with a question on dummy activities always always try to first make a separate node do not rush into making a joint node because once you make a joint node, you won't be able to end that activity separately. What do I mean? For example, if you were to do this and start off with activity C, this is correct. But there's one problem. Now you cannot make activity D because you've ended A and B together. And since you've ended A and B together, activity d cannot start but because it requires just a to be completed in isolation so even if the sequence of the question states 
two activities ending together, be cautious and try to first look at the activity that is required to be completed in isolation. So this may prove to be wrong. So what you do is you first draw activity D. And how do you do that? You make a note right here. And you start off with activity D and write the duration 1. Now, as far as we have completed this question, activity D is correct. Because this is how activity D is supposed to be made. And when you talk about C, let's do one thing. Let's end B right here. And let's start off with activity C, duration 4. Now, based on your concepts, this particular diagram may prove to be incorrect for activity C. Why? Because the diagram shows that activity C starts once B ends, right? But in the question above, activity C will only start when A and B both have ended together. This is something that is not represented clearly in the solution that we are presenting. So in order for us to highlight the dummy activity, there are certain things that we need to do. So if you look at this node, node number two, this node shows you two things, right? It shows you that A has been completed and it shows you that D has started. And this node indicates that B has completed and C sorry b has ended and c starts right but if you focus this node this particular node node number two is of particular importance to us why because this activity activity a's end is just not needed here for d it's also needed here for c so you can clearly see that a that b has a logical dependence on activities a's completion so activity A's end or completion is reflected by this node, right? So this node shows that activity A has been completed. So what do you do? You basically draw a dotted line from this node to this node. And you try to connect these two nodes. Why do you do that? You do it because in order to reflect that activity A has just not ended here, it is also being linked to the third node. So once you draw a dotted line that goes both ways, both up and down, once you've drawn the dotted line, this would indicate that activity A has been completed here and activity A has also been completed here. So any activity that requires A and B to be completed together can successfully start from this node. All right. And since dummy activity does not consume any time or resources, it is always reflected by a zero. Okay, so let's move on. We are just left with activity E that requires C and D to be completed together. So therefore, we are going to make a joint node. So we connect D, we connect C via node. And we start off with activity E and give the duration to and make a final node in the end that reflects that the project has been completed. So this is the construction, but now let's go towards the filling. And as I have explained in my previous videos, we start off with ESTs and then we'll go on to LFTs. So we start off with zero, right? So zero plus two would give us two. And one of the major blunders that students do is they add 0 plus 1 and write 1 here. But this may prove to be wrong. Why? Because if you see node number 3 has two paths that are being connected. One way is to go through this path. Is to go through B. So 0 plus if you go through B, it's 0 plus 1 and the answer is 1. But there's another path as well. And the another path is that you go from 2 plus 0. So if you consider the dummy path, if you consider A, you get the answer 2. And if you remember from my last video, when it comes to ESTs, we consider the root with the highest answer, which in this case would be 2. 
So what we do is, if we take 0 plus 1, this gives us an answer 1. But if we take 2 plus 0, this gives us an answer of 2. And since the biggest bigger answer is 2, we write 2 here. And the same step would continue. In order to reach this, this node, you have two paths. You can either go from 2 plus 1, that is use activity D, which will give you an answer of 3. Or you can go from activity C, that would give you an answer of 6. And since the bigger answer is 6, you're going to write 6 here. And then 6 plus 2, you're going to write 8. So far, so good. Now let's do the calculations for the LFT as well. So we copy paste our answers here and then we subtract values. So 8 minus 2 would become 6 here. 6 minus 4 will become 2 here. But then again, when you are going in reverse and you're trying to calculate LFTs, this particular node will become a joint node. And why is that? Because if you focus, you have two ways to reach this node. You can either go from 6 minus 1 to this node. So 6 minus 1 would be 5 if you choose activity D. But there's another path as well. The same path of dummy that was leading you downwards will lead you upwards as well. So this value minus 0 to minus 0 would give us an answer of 2. And when you talk about LFTs, we consider the smallest answer when we are faced with a joint node, right? So we have one answer that is 5 and the other answer is 2. And obviously the smallest, the smaller answer in this context is 2. So we are going to write 2 here. And then we are going to, then again, in order to reach this node, you have two paths. You can either go from 2 minus 1, which will give you an answer of 1. Or you can go from 2 minus 2, which will give you an answer of 0. And since you get the 0 here, this shows, depicts that you have done everything right. So how did you get 8 here? What was the path of the activities that you followed? So you started off, you started off from here. And then you did not consider B, right? You went downwards to this dummy. And then you considered C because it gave you a bigger answer. And then you considered E. So in other words, activity A, activity C and activity E can be termed as the critical path along with the minimum duration of 8 hours. So this is pretty much how we solve questions that involve a certain evidence of dummy activities but make sure to first identify where the dummy activity is required to be completed in isolation and draw that note first even if it comes later in the question draw that note first always draw an individual end first because then you can connect it anywhere you want but if you were to commit the blunder of making a joint node, you won't be able to make a separate node later on, which will prove to be troublesome for you, considering that you will be short on time in paper 3 as well. I hope this video helps. Thank you so much.